It is the Why Ole Miss Will Beat Louisiana Monroe episode, and everybody kind of knows that answer. But it's Veterans Day. We'll give you the reasons, and we'll talk games to watch. We'll talk about why um, Ole Miss deserves an access bowl. Stick around. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. And use the code Locked On College for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. And I am so happy everybody is joining us. We got a nice week or so of football with the Ole Miss ULM game tomorrow. We're going to do our pregame show at eight o'clock in the morning Central Time. And um, I'm thinking about doing the What We Learned episode on Sunday. I'm thinking about a Sunday podcast because it's such a short week and there's not going to be one on Friday. So stick around for that as well as I figure out what is going to go on. I think that is going to happen. I'm not, I'm not sure. So Locked On Ole Miss podcast. Why Ole Miss will defeat the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. And here we go. Ole Miss has better players than Louisiana Monroe. I mean, that sounds simple because that's what it is. Nine times out of ten, teams with better players end up winning the game. In this situation, Ole Miss has much better players. Ole Miss should win the game. They're they're a 37-and-a-half-point favorite for a reason. This is going to be a sleepy game coming off of that Georgia performance, okay? Not saying it's not. It's going to be a sleepy performance. It's going to be a bring-your-own-energy game. And one thing that Ole Miss has going for them is Ole Miss has the best script writers in the country, period. There's nobody that can write a better script script to start a football game than Lane Kiffin and his staff. That is one thing they do unbelievably well. And you can expect a fast start even if the energy is a little bit down. I think Ole Miss's offensive line needs to get in shape. They need to figure out exactly how they're going to set it up because – if Jaden Williams doesn't play, if Micah Pettis is likely out, um, there's going to have to be some moving around. This is kind of a get-right game. This is kind of that game where you want to check your combinations to make sure you have the right one on the field before Thursday night. So expect a fast start in this game. I do think that Lane Kiffin and his crew is, you know, you know, he's done a fairly – Fairly good job of getting his team ready. And, and bless ULM's heart, they were USM's slump buster this year. Um, USM was either 1-6 and six or 0-6 oh or something like that. They go over to Monroe. They get the win, 17-7. to seven. And after that, USM scoring over 30 points a game, and they've won, like, including that one, like three in a row or three out of four or something like that. Absolutely ridiculous stuff. But it counts. Right. And that USM Mississippi State game, I almost put that on the games to watch, but I did not put that on the games to watch. We're going to do that in game in the third segment. There there are a couple of games that you should keep an eye on after the Ole Miss game that can affect Ole Miss and where they're potentially bowling down the road. I'll explain to that in the third segment. Now, one of the things that I gave is the keys of the game. And I did this on Tuesday's show, I'll bring him back that. Ole Miss needs to play a clean football game and get off to a fast start. We talked about um, Wayne Kiffin being the, one of the best script writers in the conference, in the nation, honestly. It'll be imperative that Ole Miss gets off onto a fast start. Stay healthy in this game. You need to make it through that, and this will be a bring-your-own-energy game. After the Georgia game, and, and, and just sports in general, I mean, it's so high and so low. There's not an even kill that's out there in the fan base, they either like to get outraged and they yell and they just grr at you and all of that stuff, or, or they're just unbelievably excited and they're just laughing and dancing around and there's really nothing in between. So after the Georgia game, 
after what happened, there, there's obviously a lot of people that's down. So you're going to have a bring your own energy game against ULM, even though it's senior day, even though there's a lot of players that are going to come out there. If you've looked at the people that were eligible at senior day, it's like 40 players that could be going out on the football field. So we'll see exactly how that gets handled by Ole Miss and who actually walks because there's actually several players that could walk in this game and end up back at Ole Miss because they have that extra COVID year. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I don't want to you know, be overly alarmist about players that could come back or players that could leave um, and transfer um, players yet. But it is something that all schools go through and somebody is going to go. So we'll see exactly what happens. I, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but this is a bring your own energy game. I would not expect much for the crowd. I think Ole Miss is doing a deal where you can donate $11 and they'll give the ticket to a veteran. Ole Miss does a really good job for veterans right now. Uh, I, I can honestly say that because I, I went to Ole Miss straight out of the Navy and they did a really good job for me. Everything was set up. It, it was pretty fantastic. Now, I mean, Oxford's probably 30 or 40% of the size it was whenever I was there, but it, it, they did a really good job. And I think some magazines and all that talk about how well they take care of veterans at Ole Miss. And I think they're a top five institution in the country for taking care of veterans. So props out to Ole Miss. And I, I'm just, as a person that was a veteran at Ole Miss, and I, I have no complaints whatsoever. But it's a Veterans Day game. You're going to have the camouflage end zones. I, they used a different font. I have no idea what they say. I'm looking forward to that as well. And these Veteran Day games are pretty good. I'm honestly, if Ole Miss was fairly smart in this game, okay, they would probably wear navy helmets, red jerseys, and white pants as you do the whole red, white, and blue thing. Um. And I'm, them as over powder blue would be kind of something to pay attention to. But against Auburn, they wore powder with the red, white, and blue um, American flag helmet decal. So we will find out um, Saturday what it is. By the time y'all watch this show, they've already done the uniform reveal. By the time I recorded it, it was before it. Um, so that's just a thought that popped into my head as well. When we come back, we will talk about what we can watch for in this game. And I'll give my prediction. We'll talk about the line a little bit about this game. And in the third segment, we're going to talk about games that you need to be paying attention to because they directly impact where Ole Miss will be bowling in the later parts of the season. So stick around for that. But right now, I do want to let you know that the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you versus the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less than on two to six players' stat sheets and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is the most fun I've had winning 25 times my money this football season, and now I can play during basketball season too. You just select those two players. Just pick more or less their projected stats and place your entry. Price picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college, all one word, for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Also, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. That is unbelievably cool stuff. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. E when it, you'll be redirected after the premiere of this broadcast, just go down and hit subscribe and tell them Locked On Ole Miss sent you as well. That, is, that would be pretty cool. Now, there are some things that Ole Miss needs to watch for in this football game and things that could happen. And one of those 
is the fact that Quinshawn Judkins, can he break his own touchdown record? Because this is a game, it, over the next three games, we are on single-season touchdown record watch. Quinshawn Judkins had 16 touchdowns last season. He has 14 at the moment with three games left to play. So if he has one touchdown per game, he breaks the record. So we're not talking out of school here. And he had two touchdowns against that Georgia defense. So that lets you know that if Quinshawn plays and these scenarios, everything bounces right, it would not be out of the realm of possibility for Quinshawn to have three touchdowns against ULM, making him the all-time single-season record holder again at Ole Miss. The record for career touchdowns, by the way, just so everybody knows, is Deuce McAllister. He has 37. Quinshawn Judkins at the moment has 30. So the real question is over the next three games is can Quinshawn Judkins score eight touchdowns and become the career rushing touchdown leader as a sophomore? This is something to watch for in this game. This is something that you need to pay attention to. Also, ULM has lost eight games in a row. It's the second longest active streak behind the Vanderbilt Commodores. Anchor down. And also, Ole Miss is going to need style points for the coming beauty contest with Missouri. And we're going to talk about bowls and games to watch and all of that because the beauty contest is real. Because the argument for Missouri being ranked ahead of Ole Miss and why Missouri is going to go to an NU Year 6 bowl game is because of how Ole Miss looked against Georgia and how Missouri looked against Georgia just the week before. But at the end of the day, after that game goes, it just becomes an L. And there's some time to go before the decision gets made. But we'll tell you some games that could affect what they're talking about in just a moment. Now, it's prediction time, and everybody knows exactly how I'm probably going to go on this one. But we need to talk about this, because this line's a monster line. The betting line against US, ULM is 37 and a half points. I'm sure Ole Miss has had a higher line, especially against 1AA teams. I don't remember much of a higher line in an FBS game. 37 and a half points is ridiculous. 38 to nothing is the minimum number of points that can be scored in this game, and Ole Miss covers the over, I mean, covers the line. 38 to nothing will do it. 45 to 7 will do it. 52 to 14 will do it. But 52 to 17 will not. So the question becomes, do you think that Ole Miss is going to play their starters and be completely locked in enough to cover this line? 37 and a half points, a lot of points. I don't care that ULM has lost eight in a row. I do think Ole Miss is going to win the game easily. But it'll be interesting to see what it's like in the second half, what type of game breaks out. Because we've all seen games where Ole Miss just came out with their hair on fire, got up to a 31-3 to lead, and the game ended up 45-17. to Because in the second half, they're just like, hey, let's get ready for what's coming five, ga- five days down the road. That's a major, major issue. Now, if you look at my final score prediction, I'm going with Ole Miss covering the game. 48 to 10 will be enough to cover the line. I think 48 to 10 will happen. I think Jackson Dart plays into the third quarter barely. This is a barely type situation. Like one possession in the third quarter, then you see Spencer Sanders, then you see Walker Howard. Um, young players come in. I think Bill Flowers earlier in the week talked about how this is an opportunity to see some of the younger players. The bowl practices will be important for that as well. It, the, there's stuff that needs to happen in this football game. And Ole Miss can accomplish a ton of goals by just doing this. Like I said, it doesn't have to, you don't have to put 70 points up, you don't have to do that. You don't have to shut them out. You just need to win comfortably. Whenever committee members look at a sheet of paper and they see 48 to 10 over ULM, they're like, okay, that's acceptable. What would not be acceptable, okay, what would not be acceptable is Ole Miss winning 38 to 24. That would probably not be acceptable to the committee when you're having a beauty contest against the Missouri Tigers. 
I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. You're having a beauty contest against the Missouri Tigers in a situation where if you look at resume, the way it sits right now, Ole Miss is completely winning, even though it looks fairly even at the moment because Tennessee is still in there, but Tennessee is still yet to play Georgia. Um, so as this shakes out and it gets later in the year and it gets more analytically based, we'll see exactly where Ole Miss goes. Now, Missouri desperately wants an access ball, New Year's Six ball. Um, but honestly, at this point, unless Tennessee can play it close against Georgia and Kansas State can beat Kansas, they don't have the resume. At that point, it becomes about the LSU game. And Ole Miss beat LSU and LSU beat Missouri, both at home. So just something to keep an eye on as well. We'll talk about that in the next segment with you. So really, really interesting stuff. Like I said, the, the next segment, we're going to do games to watch. There's a couple of games that I think people need to keep an eye on because if we're going to be real about it, the end, this time next week, Missouri could have zero ranked wins on the resume. And that's kind of an important detail as this shakes out because likely Missouri and Ole Miss is going, they're both going 10 and 2. So we'll talk about that in the next segment as well. I do want to let you know that it is time to name our Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Quinshawn Judkins, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Quinshawn Judkins will be going for his own single-season record of 16 touchdowns against ULM. He sits at 14 touchdowns right now, so it seems likely that with three games left to go, he's going to get there. But he has completely changed the image of Ole Miss as a running back school and to be able to attract those backs to Ole Miss, much like Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make well-made alcoholic, non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, full flavor, well-crafted, just like full-strength beer. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning, and they beat the full-strength beers in global competitions. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first online order. That's code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewingcompany.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all time. Also, the Rebels play the ULM Warhawks Saturday at 11 a.m., this is your last chance to hear an Ole Miss football home game. That's that's incredibly sad just to say. And listen to David Kellum and the Rebels hometown crew. As Ole Miss looks to continue their run, you can catch every play of the Rebels home team broadcast with Sirius XM or on the SXM app searching Ole Miss Rebels. It's so, it's so sad how quickly this football season has gone by. I, I, I'm a little bit of a wreck thinking about it. So Ole Miss – is now in a beauty contest with Missouri. I don't think a 10-2 and two SEC team has ever not made an access bowl, by the way. It's, it's just a weird year at the moment, what's going on. And the national media narrative, everybody talked about how, no, the AP polls don't matter and all these don't matter. Yet they did matter when it came to and basically putting the thought in everybody's head of what where everybody should be. It wasn't a situation where, you are actually trying to just rank um, the teams in the first time. It was going off of basically, okay, number one, Georgia, you know, is just free spots because those narratives have already been established. So Ole Miss is in a beauty contest with Missouri. Ole Miss has style points, and they need to take care of that business themselves. There's really no way to get around that, but they, they have some style points that they need to – they need to handle their business, honestly. And a couple of games that you need to pay attention to outside of that are these two. You have number 21, Kansas State, at Lawrence to play number 25, Kansas. Kansas State is an eight-and-a-half-point favorite. The game is at 6 o'clock on FS1. This is a game that if Kansas wins, Kansas State is probably going to fall under out of the top 25 just where they are. They're probably going to lose the game and fall out of that. So that's one ranked team 
that Missouri has on their resume that they defeated. Their Kansas State game will officially be worthless. The other one, Georgia is at Tennessee, and we all know exactly how the Georgia system goes. We saw how Tennessee played last week against Missouri, overlooking those Tigers. Georgia is a 10.5 point favorite. The game's at 230 on CBS. Both of these games, Georgia wins like I think they can win, and Kansas State loses the game, and all of a sudden, Missouri has no ranked wins. This time next week, Missouri's resume could be no ranked wins and a loss versus a team that Ole Miss beat. That is how the playoff rankings change. There's not a path. And I and listen, this isn't an Ole Miss versus Missouri necessarily thing. There's other paths to get into the tournament. But to get into the New Year's Six, it's going to be viewed as Ole Miss versus Mizzou. And this is the narrative that is already being fed to the playoff committee because they want it to be Ole Miss versus Mizzou. They do not want four teams from the SEC in the playoff, especially in a year that the SEC was down. Okay? I mean, that's I'm just being real with you there. They can't spend the whole year talking about how bad the SEC is and then let four teams out of 12 in their New Year's Six thing. 33% of the teams cannot be SEC teams if your narrative is the SEC is down. That is the thing that concerns me the most, okay? It's not that the rankings and all that are going to happen because there's 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 carnage that can happen over the next three weeks. I gave you two examples right there that can directly affect Missouri. Oregon State has Oregon and Washington the next two weeks. You have a Pac-12 championship game that is likely going to be Oregon and Washington. So Oregon State, if they lose to either Washington, Washington or Oregon, is going to likely drop out. So let's say, let's say that um, Oregon State beats Washington. Okay, so that knocks them down to like eighth, right? Um, the Oregon State loses to Oregon. Okay, is everybody following me? That'll drop Oregon State to like 15th. And then Washington beats Oregon again in the um, championship game, knocking them down to like 7th or 8th as well. All of a sudden, Alabama and Texas is sitting right there at that like 5 or 6 spot. You have other teams that are going to go up and down, but there's chaos that can happen. That's my point. So these games, I'm going to put them up again. But it... Six o'clock central time on FS1, you can catch Kansas State at Kansas. It's the Sunflower Cup, by the way. I think the Sunflower is the state flower of Kansas. But, I mean, we're the Egg Bowl. I don't have a whole lot of room to talk. But the Sunflower Cup, I mean, that's kind of a fitting for a Kansas rivalry game. And then Georgia and Tennessee. I expect Georgia, a full-strength Georgia team, to come in there and just play bully ball because – George is in that space, and they live there in between an NFL roster and, an, and a college roster. That's that's just where Georgia lives. And they're like, how do you close that talent gap? And it's like, slowly, it's a process. You have to win consistently to get these higher and higher ranked players. We're already getting higher and higher ranked players than we normally do um, because we've been winning. Now we're going to have potentially two 10-win seasons in three years. Should be interesting. Anyway, before I get out of here, let's do a little bit of house cleaning as well. Tomorrow morning, pregame show, 8 o'clock in the morning, streaming with John Gillespie, um, talking ULM. Josh Guest is going to be walking through the Grove. So we'll we'll spend about 30 minutes there talking about any storylines that we might have. Also, Saturday night after the game, in our fields, just like we always are. Well, not Saturday night, Saturday afternoon. Um, we're going to live stream as well, talking about that. Lots of egg bowl talk is going to happen in that broadcast if it goes the way I think it's going to go. We're, we are going to move really quick to the egg bowl. And um, then Sunday, the, the What We Learned episode is going to pop maybe on Sunday. I'm thinking about just moving the episodes up a day 
and then just taking off Friday and do a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and do that in the same pattern that I normally do. So we'll see exactly how that goes as well. Um, I do not know exactly. It may just be something to where I take Sunday off like I normally do and be ready for a keys episode on Monday and just do keys and what to watch for and know your enemy and um, why Ole Miss wins those, those four episodes. So we have a ton of people coming on the show next week. Minimum of three shows per day, starting Monday, something like that. That's good. That's going to be really cool. Um, and basically everybody that's anybody that covers almost football is going to, um, be participating and all the regulars are going to be doing their thing as well, even on a holiday week. So, um, thanks to everybody for doing that. So really, really cool stuff. I do want to let everybody know again, locked on has launched a first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts on Locked On, plus our national news shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports streaming channel. Also, if you just let this premiere play out, it'll redirect you automatically as well. So just hit them a subscribe, let them know that you got sent over from Locked On Ole Miss, and I would appreciate that as well. I want to thank everybody for watching this week. I know it was ULM week, and I appreciate everybody sticking up and getting ready to do it. This, this week was kind of a slog, but we get into Egg Bowl week next week, and it should be a lot of fun. But until Saturday, until tomorrow, hotty toddy. We'll see you then.